Steam just dropped a major client update on September 9 and it is packed with changes you need to know. From a brand new accessibility menu with high contrast reduced motion and UI scaling to big improvements in the in-game overlay and performance monitor that finally fix fuzzy fonts, inaccurate FPS, and even CPU temperature tracking. Plus, they've added a customization tab for your library, improve remote play, fix countless controller quirks, and even make the store pages wider and more useful on big monitors. I'll break down everything that matters, what actually affects your gameplay, and the hidden tweaks you might miss. Let's break it down! One of the coolest things about this update is the new accessibility setting menu in desktop mode. You now have the high contrast mode, reduced motion settings, and UI scale controls. Basically, Steam is giving you more ways to make the client work the way you need it to. On top of that, many UI components now include accessibility annotations, which helps screen readers and other tools to do their job properly. Now, on to the in-game overlay and this one's a big deal. If you've noticed fuzzy fonts or misaligned performance stats when running your games, that's been fixed. They've also improved how the overlay handles high DPI display, so if you run your system above 100% scale, everything should finally look crisp and properly aligned. The performance monitor got a big update too. CPU temperatures can now be displayed on Windows and Linux, with the kernel driver handling the details. And your GPU utilization numbers on Nvidia cards are now more accurate. They also fixed a bunch of smaller annoyances like numeric labels cutting off, hotkeys not applying immediately, and DLSS versus VPS reporting inconsistencies. For Vulkan, OpenGL, and D3D12 users, overly rendering is now much smoother, especially if your system was ever CPU bound during high performance tasks. Basically, Basically, if you are monitoring FPS while gaming, it should finally feel responsive and reliable. All of this means one thing, whether you're a casual player or a performance nut, the Steam overlay is finally becoming more useful, more reliable, and more precise. Steam's big picture mode and general client usability have also seen some nice tweaks. For example, if you've ever noticed the 8-bit do controller guide showing an Xbox logo incorrectly, that is fixed. Fixed. Page shifts when scrolling through link buttons or browsing game details? Fix. Friend icons, achievement displays, offline avatars, all those small but annoying quirks have been smoothed out. On the library side, Steam has added a bunch of quality of life updates. You can now see the percentage of your Steam Cloud transfers remaining, filter private games in dynamic collection, and even set custom artwork or a custom sort title for your games in the new customization tab. These little touches make organizing a massive library way more intuitive. Notifications got some love too. You can now clearly see which toast and sound will trigger depending on your global settings and trade reversal alerts now notify you properly. Basically, the Steam client is cleaning up years of small nagging frustrations. Things just feel more polished, more responsive, and more informative. If you have ever had a game fail to load in your library or your custom logos disappearing for non-Steam games, those are largely sorted now. This is the kind of update that doesn't sound flashy in a changelog but completely changes the day-to-day -day experience for regular Steam users. Steam input got a solid set of updates this time. Support for games using the Game Input API has been added, plus analog activators now work on D-pad modes for joysticks and trackpads. Specific controllers like the PDP Realms, wireless controller for Switch are now fully supported, and GameCube controllers finally show PlayStation button prompts properly. A lot of the little quirks have been fixed too. For instance, the controller configuration screen now opens consistently in the correct window whether you are in the overlay or big picture mode, and duplicated Xbox or PlayStation controllers are much less likely to appear. Even the Steam or Guide buttons now reliably toggle the desktop overlay visibility. They've also added a speculative fix for rare crashes when using a gyro modes. For anyone who enjoys using non-standard controllers or custom layouts, this is a big 
quality of life improvement. Steam Store got a visual refresh and some quality of life improvement. Game pages are now wider, making it better for use of your screen real estate. And top genres are more dynamic and relevant. The search drop down now tells you if your game is in your library, wishlist, cart, ignored, or excluded. Small but incredibly handy for managing your backlog. Other fixes include better spacing for friend icons, improved store trailers, behavior, and a clear store menu new link structure. Overall, browsing and finding what you want is just smoother. For Mac users, there are a few important notes. First, Steam will stop supporting macOS 11 Big Sur on October 5th, so anyone still on that version will need to upgrade. There is also a fix for input issues in some web views, things like the cursor not showing up or payment dropdown staying focused after selection should now work properly. On top of that, the client startup issues for new Mac OS installs were addressed with a re-release on September 10. Linux users get some useful fixes too. Advanced options for the in-game performance overlay now work for AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. File browsing and scaling issues in XWayland have been resolved and crashes related to render processes or Steam freezing now recover properly overall. These changes make Steam on Linux more stable and responsive. Remote play is smoother, especially if you're streaming from another PC. Stuttering is reduced, guide buttons behave correctly, and pairing dialogues now appear properly on Linux when monitors are off. High bitrate recordings play back better, keyboard shortcuts work reliably, and exporting lower resolution clips no longer fails. If you record or stream a lot, these fixes are noticeable and make for a much better experience. So that's the September 9th Steam client update in a nutshell. Accessibility improvements, overlay performance tweaks, control fixes, remote play stability, and a platform specific enhancement for Mac OS and Linux. Even if some of these changes seem small, they all add up to a smoother, more customizable experience for gamers everywhere. If you find the breakdown helpful and enjoy the type of content, deep dive into Steam updates, gaming backlog tips, and our journey through our backlog, give this video a like. It really helps support the channel. And if you want to see more content like this, check out more of our videos and see if we deserve your subscription. This has been Vasheral and together with Armea, we'll see you next time. God bless, stay safe, have fun and happy gaming.